Hello. Um, all right. So I am re-recording this video because last week was supposed to be week three, but we didn't have school last week because of the crazy ice storms that we had over the weekend. So um, we are just going to pick up right where we left off and I'm re-recording this video. Um, so if you find a week three video on YouTube, uh, just ignore it. This is the one that you need. Um, so <laughs> we had a crazy week and um, we're just going to try to do our best to pick up where we left off, even though things are a little chaotic right now. So we are currently in week four of the term. Um, we It is February 23rd through the 26th this week. And um, I, of course, want to know just how are you doing? Um, lots of people experienced this crazy week that we had differently. There was people that had power or had no power for a day and some people that had no power for four days, um, maybe longer, maybe shorter. And um, we're just trying to get back into the swing of things. So I want to know, how are you, how are you doing? Um, and then to continue off of that, so this week, like I said, we are just going to pick up where we left off. So if you can remember, the second week of school, we had a week where we talked about growth mindset and learned about that and had some fun activities. And now this week, we are starting a brand new mini unit. It is a short story unit. So we will have Google Slides week four to turn in. Um, I will talk to you at the um, at some point in this video about your POV photo walk asynchronous assignment. And then please don't forget about our week two Google slides and the growth mindset personal reflection. Um, these were the activities and assignments that we had for week two. Um, I think the due date might say on there that it's due, that it was due last week, but you of course have an extended week to get this done um, if you haven't already because of the iced ice storm and power outages. And then I want to reiterate again, if there's anything that you need from me, if maybe you need more time to complete an assignment before you submit it, or if you have another question, please, please reach out to me. I want to be able to support you and help you. I keep saying last week was crazy and it really um, put threw a wrench into things. And so I want to make sure that I'm doing all that I can to make you feel supported and set up for success. So please reach out to me if there's something specific that you need. Um, okay, so I want to <laughs> try to tie in everything that we did two weeks ago now. Um, so during week two, I had you fill out a quick Google form, and I called it, what kind of reader are you? And I asked several questions, and I'm not going to go over this in great depth, but I want to show you just quickly some um glances at the responses that I got. And this is from all of my class periods, not just yours. So um, I asked this question in the survey, are you more interested in fiction or nonfiction? And a good portion of everyone that responded to the survey said they like both. I have 12% that really love nonfiction and then 32.5% um, that really love just fiction. And then a small percentage that just couldn't quite remember the difference between the two, and that's okay. Um, it's easy to get confused. So what I want to show you or remind you, make you think of when you're looking at these um, responses are kind of um, what I'm going to be aiming towards. So I asked you what kind of genres you like when you're reading, and overall, across all my class periods, apparently mystery is... Um, pretty far up there. 60, 62 or 74% of people said they really love mystery. Um, so you can kind of look at this quickly and see what are the pretty popular genres um, for books. And this is going to tie into something that I'm going to share with you in just a few slides here. Something that I hope will encourage you in helping you find books that you will actually want to read. And then again, I also asked what types of movies and TV shows you enjoyed. That was also just to give me a good idea of kind of what genres you're interested in. Obviously, books and TV shows are different, um, but it helps me to figure out what you like. And then I think this is really important, and it's going to lead me into my next point that I want to share with you. So I asked, how do you view yourself as a reader? The three options I gave are right here. These are just written in optional um, responses people shared. But if you look at this, for the most part, 
Um, we have a group of people that really love reading. They genuinely like it. They do it on their own free time. They would call themselves readers. There's only a smaller portion that just think reading is boring, and that's okay that you're entitled to your own opinion and perspective. But look at this. The majority of people who responded to this question said that they just don't know what interests them. They don't mind reading, but they have a hard time choosing that on their own because they're just not sure what they like. And so that is my job. That is what I hope to accomplish. And I'm going to show you some ideas that I think might help you figure that out if you are one of those people in the 39% group. So again, um, I these are things that I heard very frequently in the responses. I heard a lot of people say, I don't like to read books that are that aren't interesting to me. And my response to that is, me too. <laughs> this is normal. Um, you're not going to love every single book that you read. And so, unfortunately, sometimes there are circumstances where the books that you're presented with to read for school are not the genre that you would typically go for. Or it's just something that is really not genuinely interesting to you. Um, so again, you're not going to love every single book you read. I don't love every single book I read, and I read all the time. Um, some books, I, I think that I'm going to enjoy it once I start it, and then I realize, uh, this isn't actually for me. I didn't really care for it too much, and that's okay. So I want to kind of get rid of this idea that you really, if you're a reader and you love reading, that you're going to read love every book that you read. That's just simply not true. Um, and then this is another response that I got quite common. Um, I'm not a reader. My response to this, um, I acknowledge that, okay? As an English teacher, I obviously love reading. I am for it. I will do all that I can to encourage you, um, but I'm never going to force you to be something that you're not. So at the end of this class, at the end of the school year, if you decide that you're still not a reader, um, that is that's that's your choice and that's um, not anything that I can force you to be different. So my job is to show you how awesome reading can be and what kind of awesome books I think you might be interested in based off of the information you shared with me. So um, first off, I want to let you know that we have um, a really awesome selection of ebooks and audiobooks online. Obviously, we are not in person yet. Um, and so if you are finding it just hard to get access to books, if you click on this link in the slides, it'll take you to our Salem Kaiser online library. Um, and you can cruise around. There's lots of different options. Um, like I said, audiobooks where you can just sit and listen, or ebooks where you can actually open it up on your computer or your tablet and read. And then this is something that we're going to be doing in this class for the rest of the school year. It's something that I'm calling First Chapter Fridays. So if you are a Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday cohort, this will be First Chapter Thursdays for you. But at the very last synchronous day of every week, I am going to share with you a book that I think you might be interested in. Um, I will either show a book trailer or I will just simply give you a quick um, overview of what the book is and read the first chapter to you so you can get an idea of you if you might like it or not. Um, I'm hoping this is something that'll be fun. You can kind of just relax and listen, follow along, and hopefully find some books that you want to read. And then also, um, I want to let you know that I read all the time, um, not just for my job as being a teacher, but for my own personal entertainment. Um, and if you're curious as to what I'm reading, you can go um, on Canvas. I have this under the resource column. What is Mrs. Albritton reading? And you'll see something like this. So currently, I'm not reading only three books. I'm probably in the middle of like 15 or 11. I like to start them because I get really excited when I see a book that I want to read. But these are currently three that I thought I would share with you. So I am almost done with this. I'm listening to it as an audiobook, and then I'm reading the paper version of Light of the Jedi and I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Another way to find out what I am reading, um, if you go to Goodreads, this link, I have a Goodreads account and I track everything that I've read, everything I want to read, everything I'm currently reading. So you can kind of see where I'm at and what. Um, Maybe there's a genre that I really love that you love too, and you can find some good books. So 
that is on Canvas. Okay, so let's get into this new unit that we are starting. So we are doing short stories. And I want to ask you the question, what purpose do they serve? What is the point of a short story? Why do they exist? Why am I teaching this to you? I want you to think about that for a second. So I want to share this quote with you because I think it'll help us under, understand the answer to this question. With a well-told story, we can help a person see things in an entirely new way. We can forge new relationships and strengthen the ones we already have. We can change a law, inspire a movement, make people care fiercely about things they've never given a passing thought. So the point of really all writing, um, anything that you would be reading, but especially short stories, is to give you a different view of something that you're familiar with or maybe have heard before. Um, so let's get into this a little bit. So um, the short story we're going to be looking at this week and next week is um, from somebody who might be familiar to you. Um, this is BJ Novak. If you are familiar with him, it's because you watch The Office or have seen The Office. He plays Ryan the Temp. And he is um, not only an actor, but he is a writer. He actually got hired on that show um, for being a writer and then also has that acting role. But he wrote a book called One More Thing, Stories and Other Stories, and it is just simply a book of short stories. They're really funny, really awesome. They have a lot of um, funny characters, things that are interesting to think about. And one story in particular that we're going to be looking at is called Monster the Roller Coaster. So um, what I want you to do right now is click on this link right here. It'll take you to a Google Doc uh, version of this story. And I want you to just to simply read it. Um, read it, enjoy it, and then I'm not going to ask you to do anything with the story specifically yet. That is going to come next week. Um, but go ahead, pause this video, read that story, and then come back to our video. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, these are our learning targets, standards, essential questions. These are the things that we're going to be looking at for our mini unit. So we have... Um, I'll let you read over the standards, but our essential question, we're going to try to answer this by the end of um, this unit, what best symbolizes and or represents living life? Um, and then you can take a look at our learning target here. So what I want you to do now in your slides, these are text box that you can edit. I want you to take a moment and tell me anything and everything you know about these terms. So you will tell me in each box, Setting is this, character is this, anything based off of prior knowledge that you have. If any of these terms are completely brand new to you or unfamiliar or you can't remember, um, just tell me that. I don't want you to cheat and just go on Google and copy and paste something because that doesn't tell me what you know, that tells me what Google knows. So if, for example, you don't know what theme is, just say, I don't know what this is, I've never heard of it, or I remember learning about it, but it's been a while. And then just give me your best guess as to what you think it is. Um, I'm not going to mark you down if you don't know something, because if you don't know, you don't know. And that's the point of school. That's what we're here for is to learn and to grow. So I'll give you a moment here. Pause this video. Um, we'll respond to these in the boxes, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so what we're going to do next is a quick brainstorming activity, and this is going to help us as we learn about eight different literary elements um, that we're going to see this week and next week. So um, you in the graph, not graph, table <laughs> that's on the slide, you're going to tell me um, a list of your favorite stories and characters. So this is your personal preferences. This could be for books, movies, shows, video games. Anything that has a story, that counts. Um, so you can see some of my examples. And you don't need to have them match. So for example, if I put Ahsoka Tano right here, I don't have to put Star Wars under the stories. It doesn't have to be connected. Um, it can be because obviously if I love the character, I probably love the story. Um, but it can be different. So give me a list of any of your favorite characters and then any favorite stories um, anything that's interesting that you love, you're passionate about it, maybe you consider yourself a nerd about it, 
um, I want you to take a moment and write those down in the um, table. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to come back to that, but um, I want to show you what we are doing for our asynchronous activity because I think this will be helpful for you um, to hear about it right now. So we're doing something called a POV photography walk. The goal of this assignment is to understand and to see how perspective and point of view changes what we see, what we think, <clears throat> what we feel. So this is your goal. You are going to take or find a picture that represents and symbolizes life to you. Our topic is life. That's what we're focusing on. And this is to you specifically. So I want you to think about what does life mean to you? What is it and what's important in life? What is it like to experience it? What does it look like to you specifically? Um, maybe you have a specific idea of what you think life is all about, or maybe there's just something in your life that's super, super important and that represents it or summarizes it really well. So what you're going to do once you figure that out, again, you're going to take a picture or find a picture and you're going to submit that to me. And when you submit that on Canvas, you're also going to give me just two to three sentences, maybe more if you want, describing what's going on in the picture. Because if you share a picture with me of a random shoe on the sidewalk. I need to know what that means. You needed to describe what's going on for me. Um, so that is your assignment. And this is due on Monday. I don't really ever have Monday deadlines, but this is going to be due on Monday because I'm going to need to use some of your pictures um, for something we're going to do next week. So that is your activity. And that is your first synchronous day, kind of an intro. We're easing into it. Um, so this is our second synchronous day for week four. So we're going to start looking at the eight literary elements that I had you kind of do some pre-writing on um, a few slides back. So this week we are looking at character, plot, setting, and point of view slash perspective. And we are not simply going to just cover the basic definitions because a lot of this is familiar to you. I know you've covered this before. We're going to go beyond that and we're going to understand and learn what makes a story great. What makes a good story even better um, based off of these literary elements. So first off, we have character. Character is the beating heart behind any and every story. Um, it drives the plot, it influences theme, and it is integral in conflict. So um, when you're looking at characters, obviously they're the people, the living beings in the story, that the story centered around. A key to a really good character in a story is that they are interesting, that they are believable, and that we truly care about what happens to them. And if those things are true of any really, really good character, how do we, um, like what do we look for practically? Well, we need to see characters that are flawed. I think you'll see as we continue through these elements, um, great stories mimic real life and the things that we can relate to and are um, empathetic with. And people are not perfect. <laughs> we are flawed. There's not a human being on this planet that is perfect. We make mistakes. We mess up. Um, and that's, that's just the way it is. And so our characters need to be able to reflect that because that's going to make it relatable. So if you're watching something like Star Wars that's not super realistic in terms of our reality, or maybe something that is. Maybe you're watching To All the Boys I Loved Before and it's something that's a coming-of-age story about a teenage girl. Um, no matter how extreme and unrealistic a story is in terms of it's being whimsical, if your characters are flawed, they're going to be relatable and that'll make them a really good character. Um, so with that, I want you to look at this quote. Bad things happen to good characters because our actions have consequences and we do not behave perfectly all the time. So I want you to think about a character um, that something bad happened to them, whether that was a mistake they made themselves or maybe the result of somebody else's choice, somebody else's flaws. And I want you to think about who that character might be. I want you to have at least one, name more if you can, um, type them their names in these bullet points and think about that for a second. All right, so that's character. 
Um, overall though, now we're going to look at what do we practically look for? What is something very simple, something that is going to be easier for, easy for us to look at when we're reading or watching a story and we want to kind of understand the character on a deeper level. So this is a quick little bullet list you can go through. Um, dialogue is the first. So dialogue tells a lot about characters um, because, like I said, stories that are really good are going to mimic real life. And we know that people are social. We like to be around other people for the most part. Um, you, I, I could go on and on about this, but people are social overall. And we have to be able to communicate with other people, other living beings. And that's where dialogue comes, comes in. So to pay attention to what type of dialogue you're seeing. Are, is there verbal, nonverbal? Do they have an accent? Is there specific words maybe pertaining to the region they're from that they say a lot? Do they talk a lot? Do they talk pretty infrequently? Um, all those types of things are going to be things you're going to want to look at. And then the next bullet point, how do they look on the outside physically? What is their outward appearance? This is often um, important to specific characters. So not every specific little detail about what they look like on the outside is important. But sometimes there are things that can give us clues as to something that the character has gone through, um, something that is important to the story, to the plot, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, what are their habits, interests, beliefs, and dislikes? So this is more inward. What are they interested in? What are they passionate about? What do they hate? This is kind of their personality and their beliefs. And then what are their relationships like with family and others? Again, going back to that social dynamic, how do they interact with other people? How do they interact with people they love, people they don't love? Um, so what I want you to do looking at this to make this a little bit more tangible, I want you to, as best as you can, some of these might be might, might not be familiar to you and that's okay. So if, if this is the case, go back to that list that you made of your favorite characters. And I want you to think about this. Um, maybe jot some notes down in your slides. These two characters, Anakin Skywalker from Star Wars and Ariel, Princess Ariel, the Little Mermaid. Go through this list and think about what is their dialogue like? What do they look like on the outside? What are their habits, interests, beliefs? What, how do they interact with other people in their life? Um, this is going to give you a good idea of a deeper understanding of the characters. Um, so go ahead and think about that. Jot some notes down. Okay. So next we're going to talk about plot. Um, plot is probably, in my opinion, the second most important part of any type of narrative writing. Because if you have characters but no plot, you don't really have a story because there has to be something that happens. So what I want you to do, looking at this plot diagram, I want you to tell me in the slides right here, um, what do you think is the most important part of a story's plot? So go ahead and write for a second. I'll wait. Okay, so um, again, you could give me different reasonings based off of what you said. But climax. Climax is super important because this is where the conflict happens. There has to be some sort of issue and problem um, in any story that you look at. It could be something pretty minor or it could be something pretty crazy and impactful to not even just the main character, to every single person in the story. So this is going to be um, something we're going to come back to when we're looking at these points that I want to share with you. First off, um, the development of relationships creates plot. So as characters are getting to know one another, as they're maybe learning about secrets that the other characters hid from the main character or whatever it is, um, that development of relationship between characters is going to create the plot. There's going to be things that are going to happen and move. And then if you are wanting to know what might be involved in the conflict or the climax, think about what does the character care most about in the whole world? What are they, um, what is the most important thing to them? And then once you figure out what that is, that'll tell you what's at stake. It won't always be involved in the climax, but it's probably highly likely that it would be. And then this is probably the most important part of plot overall. If 
your character has not changed at the end of the story, then what was the point of the story? Because again, I've told you, stories are need to mimic real life. And when you go through something, whether it's a really big issue, miscommunication, something traumatic, you are going to change a little bit or maybe a lot on the other side of that. Um, that's what happens in real life, and that's what needs to happen in our stories. So if your character goes through some huge trial, some huge journey where they learn about their past or their parents or whatever it is, in some way that character should be changed by the end of the story because that's a result of, um, again, real life. That's what happens when something big happens in our life. Think about something very relevant, this whole being in a pandemic for a year. That's a huge issue that's a huge thing a huge event to go through and we are all a little bit different um on the other end of that so um this is plot next we have setting um this is going to be something that you can look at in two different parts so setting you can look at big picture things like time period weather time of day anything that's in the backdrop that's going to kind of set the scene and then it's also important to think about what are the details of the setting? Is there specific objects that are mentioned or that you can see that might give us a clue as to who the character is, what's going on in the story? If you're, you know, thinking about maybe a crime, true crime, mystery type of genre, there might be something in the setting that's really, really important to the plot. So um, I'll let you look at that. And then we have point of view and perspective. And this is going to be one that we really focus on this week and next week. So I, point of view and perspective are different, but they are connected and they work together. Point of view focuses on the type of narrator used to tell the story. So you can think about which character are we seeing the story from, their eyes. And then perspective is how the narrator perceives what's happening. So for example, um, if we're looking at, let's go back to Star Wars. If the entire story is told from the point of view of Anakin, his perspective is going to be what we see because he is the narrator. He is he is the, the character we're viewing the entire story from, and his perspective is going to be how he's reacting. What is his attitude? What is his um, perception of the events happening? And of course, if the point of view is different, um, so let's say the story is told from Obi-Wan's view, that's going to be um, a completely different perspective. So I want you to, in your um, slides, tell me how would the story change if point of view perspective changed? Right about that. Okay, we are going to end this week with a first chapter Friday, and we're going to use um, this book. It's called A Study in Charlotte. Um, this is really cool. This is a twist, a modern twist on Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Um, mystery was one of the most common genres that was interesting to you all based off the survey, so I thought this would be a good one to start off with. So what you can do in your slides, um, I'm not going to play it in this video, but you can watch this book trailer. Book trailers, if you haven't heard of this, are really cool. It's It'll look like maybe something that you can watch on Netflix, but this is just a really cool trailer video that they created for the book. So again, this is not something you can watch on TV, this is a book that you can read. Um, Warning, there is one F word in the trailer. I tried to find a way to get rid of it, but I couldn't, so just be warned about that language. Um, but this is really cool, and it'll give you a good idea as to what this book is all about. So go ahead and watch this. Um, pause the video. All right. Uh, so that is all I have for you for um, week four. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but that's, that's it. That's it. That's it for uh, week four.